Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, we are from the official social media team of our college, and we have organized this meetup to let the students of our college know that there is a lot of research going on here. And to begin with, could you please elaborate about your vision for the future development of the college? And I am particularly interested in your vision about enhancing the research and integrating new technologies. Okay, thank you. It's a very good question and very valid question. So let me tell you at a larger picture that uh, we are going to implement national education policy, which is NEP, which is 2000. Actually, it was uh, started in 2030. And under this policy, it is actually a student-centric policy. So there's a lot of flexibility given to the students. For example, suppose you want to study uh, subjects of your choice, you can do that. You can take those electives apart from your core branch. So you can have a combination of your core branch and also minor in certain area where you are passionate about. It also supports multiple exits. That means if you want to leave the program, after one year or two years, you can always do it. And you can always come back and rejoin the program. I can explain this with an example. For example, if I have an integrated MSc program. So if you study for three years, you get you know BSc degree. And if you study for four years, probably you will get the BSc honors. And if you study for five years, then you get MSc degree. So multiple exit is possible. And similarly, multiple uh, entry is possible. So, for example, if anybody wants to enter into second year of uh, BTEC or architecture, those possibilities are there. So, it's, it's a very good policy for the students. So, it's a sports multidisciplinary because these days, you know, it is not that you study only one discipline, you should study other different disciplines. And there are a lot of problem areas which, which fall into the intersection of multi, multiple disciplines. This is one thing. And then we are starting some new courses which are actually relevant to Indian industry. For example, we are starting in a course, we are rather we have started a course from this year which is BTEC in DLSC, very large scale integration. It's a four year course on only in DLSC. There's a lot of focus by Indian government on very large scale integration and DLSI. And, uh, government has already invested huge amount of money to set up fabrication labs in the country. So there will be a huge requirement of manpower who are expert in DLSI. This is one, one example. And then we also want to ensure that we have some courses so that employability of our graduates increases. So for example, we have a committee where we have people from industry participating in this committee who decide the curriculum and other things. So inputs from the industry also comes. And during the course, there are few lectures which are taken by the industry veterans so that they know what is happening in the industry and accordingly we can change our curriculum. So our students will be you know, employed. So this is one other thing. And also we want to increase industry academia interface. We want to have more MOUs with industry so that our students, they work on live problems, which are there, you know, which industry is facing or industry is trying to solve. So we want to have more MOUs with industries so that the exposure of the students becomes uh, very good. And then uh, we also have a incubation and innovation center here. Uh, so what uh, that center does, if anybody wants to start a company, for example, he has some good idea and he wants to start a company. Then he can test his idea in the lab or in the incubation center. If he or she thinks that this idea is worth pursuing, then he can always, you know, go and you know join the incubation center, take mentorship from them, get some funds from there, and you know, work on on those ideas. And if he's successful, he or she can open a company. So this is uh, we want to focus on this innovation and entrepreneurship. And also, there's a lot of focus on research. It's an ecosystem. So what we are trying to do, we write to different agencies and try to get you know projects. And those projects are 
basically required by the industry or by the society at some stage. So, so our students they get you know experience in working on those projects because it will come to the faculty. Faculty will employ some some staff from outside, including students from the university, and they will work on those projects and they will interact with industry folks. So there is a good you know interaction also happens with the industry. So these are the few directions which we want to take. Uh, in the next uh, two three years. Thank you, sir. That was such an insightful overview. And additionally, could you please elaborate on initiatives and mm -hmm. some specific projects that we are mm -hmm. currently working on? So uh, we have few center of excellences here. Center of excellence means that particular group only works in that area. So one example is center of excellence in AI, artificial intelligence. So we have a COE Center of Excellence in AI, where you know undergraduates they can do their projects using that facility. The research uh, students then can use that facility. It's a high-end uh, facility. It has NVIDIA workstations, high-end computing environment. So we can you know work on these projects. This is one center which actually all the departments. Use because artificial intelligence will come in all the departments, right? And the second is, uh, there is a center of uh, excellence in uh, Internet of Things, IoT. And uh, so we have one IoT lab uh, and uh, one fabrication lab. So where you can fabricate your, you know, subsystems or some hardware. And then uh, Internet of Things, one can do there are a lot of sensors, 3D printing, all those facilities are available. So any project uh, which is related to IoT, one can do there. The third center of excellence which we are trying to get is uh, in quite advanced stage is uh, center of excellence in design. So we have a course in BDES, Bachelor of Design and Master of Design. Now design is actually more creative. And then if you have creativity and technology, and that's the best combination. So we have, you know, design in product design, game design, various aspects of design. So the idea is that first two years, the student will study about design principles. And then for second year, third year, either he goes to product design or game design or fashion design. So to support all these activities, we are going to open a center of excellence. We should support all these, uh, you know, design uh, areas, and then uh, we have uh, uh, we have one uh, COE Center of Excellence in Industry 4.0. So that is the latest in uh, manufacture, where you use robots, AI to take decisions so that your uh, productivity increases. So it's a latest uh, addition which is going to happen in NSUT which will be in the best campus, which is called as Industry 4.0 Lab. And not many universities in the country has this, probably five or six may have this Industry 4.0. So our students will get exposure to that Industry 4.0 and, you know, readily employable. So this is one thing. And uh, as I mentioned that uh, we want to have good interaction with the industry. And also we are in the process of uh, getting some professional practice. Professional practice means any person who has worked in industry, he may not have PhD degree, but he has good 20 years or 25 years of, you know, practical experience in the industry. We will hire him as professor of practice so that he can take classes uh, which will give our students exposure about the industry. For example, a person has worked in IBM for 20 years. He can be appointed as professor. So we want to have many personal practice so that the industry flavor comes to our character. So this is one uh, one direction we are thinking. And also we are thinking of designing some new courses. New courses when I say, which is again the discussion stage. For example, AI in climate action. Climate action, you know, things are not very good as we, as, as are today. So how AI can help you in climate action? How AI can be used in agriculture? So we want to have somehow some, deg some degree in AI, for example, 
and then specialization in climate action or focused on agriculture you know we want to we want to see the application of ai in the areas which directly you know help the society so that is our objective publishing paper is fine but at the end of the day we want that whatever research outcome comes is useful to the society right so this is one area and then uh, uh, we all as i mentioned we have written many proposals to the funding agencies so hopefully we will get some of them and uh, once we get those proposals uh, the funding then we are able to recruit more number of phd students more number of research staff and our infrastructure also increases so it has a multiplier effect uh, so these are some of the you know specific steps we have taken so there is an interesting center of excellence in hydroponic hydroponic is actually a science where you grow the plants without the soil the nutrients are given in the water and you can get the plants and using this for example normally you use a you know soil for growing the plants and they are all seasonal i mean something is available in winter or something is available in spring using hydroponic it is any time of the year so and you don't need soil there's a lot of you know space currents in the city for example so you can use this technology for growing plants and you can grow any type of plant whether it is exotic or you know normal plants or you can control the nutrient value of those plants so it is up to you what you want to have if the yield is generally very high and then there will be conservation of water because you don't require any not much water as compared to normal soil normal conventional growth plants so this is when very interesting area uh, where we have set up a hydroponic facility is about 750 square meters and uh, i think some the students should visit there and see those flowers and vegetables and herbs growing in the controlled environment the only problem with those things is you require a controlled environment the humidity the temperature but uh, as we go we will be able to handle these things also so that you know the technology is available to general farmers and they can grow this uh, you know using this technology they can grow uh, anything around the year so this is another interesting thing which is again a center of excellence where students they get trained we also run courses related to hydroponics and we also see that the farmers they come and visit our facility so that they get excited about this technology so there's a new trend so it is again under development but then it takes some time before you know this technology goes to mass masses and we were just thinking it's a lake and you will know what that see this is a this campus is a zero waste campus whether you take solid waste or liquid waste this is zero waste campus. we have a very good facility where you know you get the waste material from hostels or from houses so that uh, that is you know uh, filtered using some technique and ultimately the water which you get is a is a good quality good quality i mean you can't drink it but it's a quality which can be used for gardening it can be used for you know flushing for example in the hostels so you can you you can make a water body Uh, so so these are the things and we have been awarded actually zero waste campus by mcu so both for solid waste as well as liquid waste within the campus we have a facility so we we'll say it's a zero waste campus and we have lot of uh, areas where we harvest rain water so our water problems are you know resolved because we are able to harvest rain water so this rain harvesting and uh, zero waste and at the same time we want to uh, you know minimize on the energy consumption so there are a lot of areas where we have put you know solar cells so that we are able to harvest energy from the solar cell not dependent on the grid energy so basically we uh -huh. attack on all the three wastage energy and we got hosting so it is going to be sustainable you know campus mm -hmm. so so these are the activities which are happening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Well, it you. is so exciting to know about know about this new development. Okay. And thank you for taking out your time for this.